Okay. All right, there we go. And I will pin and spotlight myself, Asian A, and the interpreter. Oh, I just did that. <laughs> Oh, you did. <laughs> this is what happens when we're both used to chat moderating. Right. <laughs> and Sarah is joining us today. She is going to help us with chat moderating. She's going to help us read what pops up in the chat while we're presenting, because normally it's Asian A or I that are doing the chat moderating. So we're going to try and step back from that and focus on the presentation. All right, welcome everyone. Um, today's Tech Tuesday um, topic is Android versus iOS Apple software. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be presenting um, about the Android and Apple um, software. My name is Asian A. Thomas. Um, I go by pronouns she, her, hers. Um, I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist for the Michigan Assistive Technology Program here at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. And today I am um, wearing a pink blouse with a black um, jacket on. I have glasses, I have brown skin, and I have brown braids in my hair. Sorry, can and my name see? is Sorry, Abby, can everybody see the interpreter now and Abby and Asian A? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There's okay. There's a chat. Okay. I did good. switch it so it's just pinning um, the interpreter. And so if you'd like to see everyone though, you can go ahead and to the top and click view, and then switch to gallery. So hopefully that'll make it easier. Oh, it's okay. Zoom. It's a huge learning curve, and there's always updates, and it's always changing. So totally understandable. <laughs> um. So, and sorry, my name is Abby Squires. I am working here on the assistive technology team as well. I specialize in AT for gaming and for crafting. A visual description of myself is I am a fair-skinned woman of size with dark brown hair up in a messy bun. And I have dark brown glasses on and a black t-shirt. And great question in the chat. And we're gonna get to that right now, actually. So Michigan, uh, MDRSD stands for Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, and MATP is Michigan Assistive Technology Program. And we do a lot of these presentations, so if we ever say any acronyms that don't sound familiar, please feel free to shout out in the chat, be like, wait a minute, back up, <laughs> what is that? So um, and we don't mind going over it a few times if need be, so feel free to just keep typing in the chat and keeping that conversation going, which kind of brings us to questions and housekeeping. Um, so we welcome questions throughout the sessions. We like it to be interactive. Um, you can feel free to unmute your microphone and chime in with a chat or a question. You can raise your hand, use that feature on Zoom, or you can uh, just type in the chat. Um, and we'll also be asking some questions throughout the presentation to just kind of get some feedback and just kind of get to know everyone a little more. So another acronym. <laughs> so MDRC, again, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Our mission is that we cultivate disability pride and strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle, dismantle all forms of oppression. Our vision is that we envision a world where people with disabilities have space for self-discovery, to cultivate community, and to develop pride. And me and Abby were both part of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. So again, today, what our Tech Tuesdays are, are um, about are just different assistive technology devices and tools. Um, and so what is assistive technology? Um, assistive technology, AT, <laughs> is an item, piece of equipment, software, or an app that is used to help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. Technology can make things easier for everyone. For people with disabilities, AT opens up possibilities. 
And so what we do here at MATP Michigan Assistive Technology Program is we provide um, assistive technology related supports around the whole state of Michigan. We serve everywhere from the top of the UP to the bottom of the lower mitten, we serve it all. Uh, we do demonstrations for items, we do short-term loans, we spread awareness information, we do trainings and other types of loan programs. Um, our organization is all by people with disabilities, for people with disabilities, and we have um, our phone number here on the slide, which will also be in what we send out and our website, you can, or our emails, you can email us and to request a, a demo or a loan. Today, we will be covering um, different products and types of Android and iOS, um, Apple device and products. Um, and we will also be going over Android and iOS accessibility features, um, using devices and products for social isolation, and then other resources and assistance with your device. So for example, um, Apple classes and other workshops to assist with your device. Do we have any questions so far? It looks like um, trying to spotlight the speaker and interpreter. Um, let's see if we can add spotlight and. Can we spotlight three people? Is that, can we do that? Woohoo, does that look letting... better, TJ? I don't know if that, hopefully that worked. And then also um, we have a comment saying, but what if people outside of the country? Um, so with Michigan Assistive Technology Program, we are, it is for just the state of Michigan, but we can still provide resources and all that. Um, but each state in uh, America that has their own AT program. So I think depending on where you're from, we might be able to help research and find out um, what type of AT programs, if there are any. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be something if you will have our email addresses or our phone number, um, if you wanna reach out after the presentation, that's something we can help look into for you. And no problem, TJ. So we have a question for you all. Do you prefer Apple or Android products? Feel free to unmute um, or enter your preference in the chat. Um, I am the Apple <laughs> user. I definitely prefer, prefer Apple products over Android products. Yes, Julie, <laughs> PJ, <laughs> Isabel, Bethany. Yes, Candor, Apple. Yeah. Android. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. I see a lot of Android. Where's the Apple people? Uh, That's you the problem. Like Apple. <laughs> hey, hi. Number one, it's not easy. Mm. Number two, it's not voiceover. Yep. Yeah, and so actually Android does have voiceover now. It's called yeah. TalkBack, and so we'll get into that. But yeah. so you, at the end of this presentation, you might just turn into an Android person. No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outnumbered. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay, so it looks like we do have a lot of um, Android. So maybe I can get people to convert over to Apple after this presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So just getting right into um, the different products. So first, we're going to talk about some Apple iOS cell phones. Um, right now, we're in the current software of the iOS 15.6 and the current model is iPhone 13. Um, we just wanted to kind of go over some price points of the different products um, to kind of compare and contrast even when you're making those um, buying decisions on your device. Accessibility and what works for you definitely is the top of the priority list, but also what's within your budget and um, where you get the best bang for your buck. <laughs> so um, Apple iPhones can range um, for the current models can range anywhere from 700 to about $1,000. And then also depending on colors, um, styles, si phone screen size, um, storage space, um, those all make the device kind of go up in price. Um, older models can range anywhere from $100 to about $500. Yeah, and in the chat, we have someone saying that that's what they have is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Oh, wow. Okay. 
And the reason why my Android slide looks a little bare is because there's no way I could possibly fit everything on this slide. Um, but the current software is the 12 point. And I think that one has like a nickname, it's Cotton Candy. But the thing that's fun about Android is that all of their software, um, they're all named after desserts. So I think it started with like cupcake and then there's like lollipop and jelly bean, like it's just fun. Um, but the current models, um, some of the top ones would be like the Galaxy phones, um, the Google Pixel. They also have like the Motorola, the, um, the LG, the HTCs. And I don't know what those acronyms stand for, but there's just so many types. Basically any phone that's not an iPhone is usually probably operating on an Android system. And when it comes to like the Google Pixel, I used to be confused. I'm like, well, what's the difference between Google and Android? Google owns Android. So the Google Pixel is an Android operating system. Yeah. Also, with the Apple, I like the like photography. So when you take a camera in your car, you can actually take a camera and you have a video. Yeah. Yeah, I really, the night photography. So Apple does have some good cameras. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, and yeah, the night photography, I think is really cool. And, but I feel like Android's got some good cameras too. You know, maybe next presentation, Asian Age should compare Instagrams. Yeah, we should. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so overall for best price, <laughs> for phones the winner would probably be an android um the highest price phones on both platforms can easily cost one thousand dollars or more but the average cost of an android device is lower than an iphone sorry i didn't even get to the prices yeah because it can range from like thirty dollars to over a thousand but so then we're going to get into tablet devices. Um, Apple iOS has iPads. Um, current software, again, is the iPad OS 15.6. Um, they are in the ninth generation for an iPad, um, which would be the second to the left image um, on the screen. Um, and then the iPad Pro is in the fifth generation. And the iPad Air is the five as well. And iPad Mini is in the sixth. Those range from five hundred dollars. I'm sorry, from three hundred and twenty nine dollars to about eight hundred dollars. And again, depending on size, storage space, um, color, can make those prices range and go up more. Um, and on the screen, I'm sorry, there's a um, there's an image of four different um, iPads: the Mini, the Air, the Pro. And then, um, I'm sorry, the Pro is the biggest one. So it's the mini, <laughs> the iPad, the iPad Air, and then the Pro. Yeah, they said, is the mini too small? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Sarah. It's a little habit. Oh. Uh, I guess that all depends on your preference. So for maybe children or someone that just needs a smaller device, um, the iPad mini can sometimes be something that it, because it is smaller, um, can actually be more useful for someone else. All right, and then- Yes, it depends on the storage and um, Android, nope, you can't put that on a Mac. Yeah, and with Android, a lot of, like with their phones and tablets, a, a lot do have the ability to have that external storage, like the added on, like with an SD card. And I feel like that's not usually an option with. Yes, iOS. you would probably have to purchase, you have to purchase storage um, for Apple products too. And with Android tablets, there is a lot of flexibility. Um, and we're going to kind of get into like the um, continuity of Apple versus Android, because depending on certain tablets, a lot of the features that you're going to be looking for, like they might look different or be in different spots when it comes to Android. But that is where it kind of gets better with iPhones is that it's consistent. It's usually always in the same place, same place looks the same. Um, but then also, like if that's something you're worried about, that's something where I like to go to Google, which is my best friend, um, and you can look up the tablet you're looking to buy. And 
see what kind of layout it has. Um, also, some tablets come with a lot of the accessibility apps already built into the, um, the tablets, which makes it a lot easier. And I tried to put some of the tablets that are out there in some prices, but again, it just varies so much. You can get a tablet for under $100. Um, it depends on what you want to do with the tablet, how much you're going to be um, using it. If it's just going to be for like video games or just for reading, you might not want to like splurge and get like a thousand dollar tablet. Um, and looks like in the comments, ninth generation iPad. Oh, Asian, he said starts at 329. And then what the new feature was Samsung Galaxy S22. What about Zoom in live on Facebook? I think mean, most tablets would be able to handle Zoom and live on Facebook. I think it depends on your internet as well, but also um, the processing of the operating system. But that one was kind of a toss up. We, um, <laughs> we couldn't decide who, who was better, um, which Asian A and I could go back and forth all day on. <laughs> um, but another thing is that at MATP, our assistive technology program, like if you were curious to have like a hands-on experience with both, to find out which one works better, that's something you could reach out to us and we could help you out with. Ooh, I'm starting to, maybe you're right, Abby, and going to buy an Android. See, it's already happening. What, you switched that fast? <laughs> <laughs> so just oh. talking about um, smart watches, um, Abby, if you wanna start. All right. I was used to having you go first and then I forgot yeah. I put mine, yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> with um, Android watches, um, a lot of the smart watches out there are, are like usually Android operating system if it's not iPhone, but um, the main top ones that I've been seeing are the Galaxy 4, the Galaxy 4 Classic, and there's one called Tick Watch Pro 3 Ultra, which has a lot of really good reviews. Um, yeah, like, so in the comments it said, I never hear Galaxy 4 is that new watch that Samsung came out with. Yes. So it's the newer one Samsung came out with, and they're already working on the next one. Um, and the only thing that I've noticed, like, I have tried one of the Galaxy watches, and the battery life was not great when it came to the watches, which normally, like, with my phones, it hasn't been an issue, but the watch, not the best. Um but then I also noticed that Google is coming out with a watch that's going to be only for Android operating systems, which I feel like will be weird for Apple because norm that's normally like when things are an Apple product, it's only used for Apple. But I feel like when it's Android, really anyone can use it. But so it's going to be interesting with the new Google watch, how it's only going to be for Android phones, which I'm kind of looking forward to. Um, what are cap capabilities of smartwatches? Whew, so many things. Um, what I liked to use it for was um, reminders because um, I could get the Google Assistant on mine. So I could ask it to set reminders. I could ask it like, what time is it? What's the weather? But it also can track, depending on what kind of smartwatch you get, it can track your stress levels even. It can track your heart rate, it can track how well you slept, how long you slept, how long you ran for. Um, I can't stand Google because they just put your picture on the search engine without your permission. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good time. Um, I can see that. Uh, also with the smartwatch, I think it's um, the access to your phone without having your phone. So a lot of times like I'm doing things that, um, I like need both hands and I'm like, you know, working or something. And it's like, I can get an alert from right on my wrist on my watch and see like a text message or see um, an alert coming through or a phone call coming through. Um, and I don't have to like go grab my phone. And then also if I lose my phone, I can ding my watch <laughs> and find my phone. <laughs> so that is like my favorite feature of my um, Apple watch for sure. Oh yes. you can call and do text messages as well. Yeah. And um, and there's a lot of apps that you can get on there too. Like there's a lot of possibilities and different watches do sometimes do different things. So that's another thing to, um, I like to YouTube or go to Google about, but, um, um, and I do believe it does work with Samsung Health. Um, TJ asked, is, it is the Tick Watch Pro 
3 Ultra compatible with Samsung Health. Um, the last I checked, I thought it was, but that's something I would definitely look more into before purchasing, if that was something that you were interested in it doing. I don't know if we talked about that, if you mentioned that, Abby, but the fact that there's like apps on your smartwatch too. So um, like I can play music from my watch um, through like my music streaming app um there's like a bunch of different things that your watch is capable of doing that's kind of like a smaller phone on your wrist um the apple watches range in price from starting at about 200 dollars to 400 dollars, and those go up too so they even have like um designer brand uh bands <laughs> that you can put on the watch um that makes that price go way up um the way that you customize the screen the colors of like the um the face um, around the band and around the watch um, so that those prices can range to where you could probably purchase an Apple watch that is about a thousand dollars, depending on what you want it to look like. <laughs> um, as far as what would be the better smartwatch, some of those health features that we said um, is what Apple does have. So the ECG, where they monitor your heart rate, um, blood oxygen readings. Um, I did read an article where people were kind of discussing like how um, a, a smartwatch could go about reading like blood sugar levels. And their scientists are like trying to develop that, but they're kind of seeing that way down the line on how they would go about that. Um, but there are apps for that. <laughs> and then um, communication upgrades. So like the cellular and being able to talk to text, things like that. Um, they now have a brighter screen, thinner display borders um, so that there's different sizes of the face to fit smaller wrists um, or larger wrists and kind of customizable in that way. And then with an Apple Watch, definitely faster charging. And like Abby said, the longer battery life for the Apple Watch. Right now, it's currently 18 hours that a watch will last for Apple. Some of the um, accessories and headphones, so Apple does have their own line of like headphones and they also have a um, connection with uh, Dre Beats, Beats by Dre. Dre Beats. Um, so these headphones, um, that gives a little bit more versatility in the type of headphones. Um, there's AirPods, the AirPods Pro, and the AirPods Max, which are over the head headphones, and the other ones are more like earbuds. Um, the headphones can for Apple can range from $129 to $549. Um, and those use the specific Apple plugs to charge. Um, and these are just some of the accessories that Apple has available. A couple of questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I think it's, but go ahead. Gardner, yeah, just to answer your question about Android watches and where you can check your packages. Um, I think just having the Amazon app like that can pop up um, as a notification on any watch if it's compatible with having that Amazon app on there. Um, but uh, Android watches, Abby, like, do you have app cap capabilities? Oh, yeah, there's a okay. lot of things <laughs> that you can get. And yeah, like with the same thing as you like, you can do like the music, you can, um, there's just so many things. I feel like that could be a presentation in itself. Yeah. Um, but if that's something like you want to know about like specific apps that they might have, that's something that you could benefit from. Like that's something that if we don't know right off the top of our head, like right now, we would, we wouldn't mind researching more about that and going over it with you. Yeah. And for the, what's the difference between 5G and 4G? That's a great question. Um, I just Googled it because I wasn't sure. <laughs> That's so referring to the network. So it's um, 5G is that it's more speed and more capacity it holds than 4G. So it's just like the difference in speed of the network it's connected to. And TJ said Apple Watch is less than the Galaxy watches. Wow. I I like I saw Better. it and I know like, we were going over this all week and I feel like it's still not true, but it clearly is. <laughs> um lisa are we talking too fast me and abby both talk so fast sorry. i'm sorry I well, so we excited. will slow down so lisa can slow down <laughs> sorry lisa <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Yes, so um, there are other types of smartwatches too that are Android that are a lot cheaper. Um, they don't necessarily do as much, but they are cheaper than um, the Samsung Galaxy watches and cheaper than the Apple watches. Um, so really, it just depends on what you need your watch to do for you and then going from there to see um, <laughs> Bethany just said it won't hurt to slow down. Lots of information. Thanks. Um, so I'm so sorry. I lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, so there's multiple options when it comes out there for smartwatches, especially for Android operating system. Um, in the chat says, do Android tablets have pen with it? Um, I don't think there's a just like the Apple Pen, like I do have an iPad with an Apple Pen and I love it. I don't know if there's an equivalent one, but there are styluses out there that you can use. Um, I'm sure there has to be something similar, but maybe I'm just being hopeful. Yeah, Apple has a pencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just have to be extra. A stylus. So that um, is kind of like what the Apple Pencil is. Like, or there's um, some other ones that look like pencils, but it has like a rubbery tip on the end that um, when you touch the screen, it works like a, the Apple Pencil does. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so in addition to um, some of the accessibility features we're going to go over, um, a lot of people might do well with other accessories for their um, devices like noise canceling headphones or Bluetooth speakers like the Apple Pencil, the styluses, um, and wireless keyboards are helpful too, especially when you're using switch access, um, which is something we'll be going over more. So as far as accessories, um, we did say that Android won <laughs> in the accessories department, um, just because their phones offer the widest choice of accessories. So that also gives you just more flexibility in um, getting um, the correct device that fits your needs. So Android uses the USB ports to connect to other devices, and those USB ports are available practically everywhere. Um, Apple, on the other hand, they have their own lightning port to connect certain accessories. So it makes you kind of um, stuck in the box of having to use those Apple products. And we have something in the chat. All right, it says, so if people are blind like me, I use JAWS for me to hear what I type in chat. Does Android have something like that? So they do, um, but when it comes to JAWS specifically, I do believe I keep hearing that JAWS works better with Apple, with the iOS system, um, but it does work with both, I believe. And um, Android does have something called TalkBack, which we'll gonna kind of go over, but it's similar. So that actually brings us to our next question. Are there any accessibility features or tools that you are currently using for your device or devices? And this can be anywhere from um, vision accessibility, hearing. Um, does Samsung has a, have a non-universal USB, Abby? I think it's a universal USB. The USB-C, which is the um, newer USB one, um, Google Live Transcribe on Android. Yes. 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 Sorry. I, I, love that. I was in the middle of answering <laughs> TJ. Sorry. Um, but when it comes to the USB, I believe um, Android's is more universal than Apple because with Apple's, you can only use it on certain Apple products. But with the USB C, like I can charge my phone, but then also go and charge like a headset or use it to charge my PlayStation controller or you know, so like different things like that, it's more universal than it is with Apple. And because I think I forgot my charger and I saw Asian A's and I was like, oh, can I use this? But hers has like a weird thing in it, so I can't use it on mine. It's very rude if you ask me. <laughs> and we've ran into that with headphones and all that type of stuff. It's like I specifically have to use this charger, um, this hookup to um, put in the computer or whatever for Apple products that can't just use um, any USB. 
Um, so some of the AT or accessible features or tools that people use are Google Live Transcribe or an Android, um, the night photography and voiceover in the Mac type screen, um, voice caption and live caption, voicemail transcriber. Awesome. Anyone use any like mobility um, tools or anything with their phone or device? Cases? No? Also, I don't think I mentioned voicemail transcriber in my future slide, but I do love that. <laughs> <laughs> so just to kind of cover some of the AT or assistive technology for mobility. So with your devices, um, even just you trying to get a protective case for your device can um, make it harder to use your accessible features on your device. Um, so if you're having like an outer box case that has a lot of protection around it, it makes it kind of harder um, to press buttons and to get access to those like side buttons and sometimes can even cause a little issues with using like your camera. Um, so there's some cases that um, can assist with grip and holding. So like a pop socket, which is the picture that um, has like a teal color phone and there is a round circle on the back of the phone. So it allows you to grip um, with two fingers and you can kind of hold the um, phone better. Then there's also cases with handles, cases with straps. Um, you can strap them over like crossbody um, and then the flexible mounts and holders. So a holder that can go even over your neck to allow you to hold up your device hands-free. Um, and then there's selfie sticks and other mounts and holders are available even that can um, fit tablets in larger devices. Yeah, and I love Isabella said pop sockets and um, TJ said that they have the neck one. Oh, cool. Sorry. <laughs> right. Oh, it looks like we're gonna lose someone for a moment. It says they're gonna, they have to reset their uh, PC as the update, but no worries. It's recorded so you can see the rest of this later and we'll send out the information as well. But thank you for joining us. So we're going to get into the accessibility features. So where you can find these accessible features in your phone or device, um, tablet device or watch is in your settings. And in the Android, um, there is an image of an icon with like a gear. Um, what color would you say that is? Like a grayish blue color. <laughs> um, and then it has um, accessibility with an icon of a person. Um, well, like an image of an outline of a person. And then it's a green um, icon under the accessibility. And then the Apple iOS, it's like a larger gear um, and their icon is a blue, um, is blue. And then there's a circle around the person, the outline of the person. <laughs> And in your accessibility settings, there are categories for vision accessibility, hearing, physical and motor or touch, assistive touch, and then also a voice assistant accessibility features. All right, my favorite. Um, for Android, we have, um, I'm afraid to say that I want to activate it for anyone, but we have the, hey, Google, and I forgot about it because it's in Bixby. Um, I don't really use that one as much. I, I'm so loyal to my Google. Um, but with Android devices, you have the um, Samsung uh, voice assistant, which is Bixby. And then when it comes to um, other Android devices, you have the option of also just using, hey, Google. And that I use that every single day. I wake up and I ask it what the weather is going to be like, what time it is, and if it can set another alarm for me because I know I'm going to fall back asleep. <laughs> For um, Apple iOS voice assistance, it is Hey Siri. Um, and inside of your settings, you can find two different ways to access and change the settings for Siri. So there is Siri in search, and then there is just the Siri option. Um, on your watch, um, it is on the side, there's a button where you hold it, and then Siri can pop up to help you with voice assistance. On a phone device, um, also it's a side button, long press. And then on the iPad device, devices. Um, it's sometimes on the top of the iPad and you would hold it for um, a few seconds and again Siri will pop up to assist.
We have a video of um, someone comparing the voice assistants. All right, yeah, so it's gonna be a video they have. Um, Do I have also, to stop and share? Uh, wait, what? Do I have to stop share for you to? Uh, I can kick you off, so it's okay, you don't have oh, to. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's actually, it's a video and it compares the um, Bixby, Google, Alexa, and Siri. Um, all together. So it's just going to, it has them like lined up and it has, it's going to ask a question and then it'll either have a check mark or it'll have an X. So like saying if it did what it was asked and then it has like a tally system at the top. So we'll go through a little couple of them. It's like a eight minute video, so we won't go over all of them, but let me share my screen now. Make sure I share my sound. All right. Oh. Hope everyone can hear this. Tomorrow. Open up Instagram. Open up Eminem on Instagram. Show me Rihanna on Instagram. The pixel can go to specific Instagrams even when their username is different than their real name. Turn on dark mode. Turn off dark mode. Uninstall YouTube. Open the store. Download Twitter. Hey Google, when is your birthday? It's hard to tell because I update so often. So feel free to wish me a happy birthday whenever you like. Hey Alexa, when is your birthday? It's November 6th. I have the same birthday as the Oscar winning and zombie chasing actress, Emma Stone. Hey Siri, mm -hmm. when is your birthday? It's October 4th. That is, if you consider my first day on the job to be my birthday. And you know what? I do. Hey, Bixby. When is your birthday? I've never thought about that. Let's celebrate today. So, that's just kind of an example of some of the different voice assistants. Um, and this particular one has a bunch of different voice comparison videos on different systems. So I'll make sure that I have this added to the chat and you can kind of check out their YouTube channel and see different types of comparisons. So overall, the better voice assistant would actually be Android. <laughs> and that would be um, for Siri. It's available through all iOS and Mac devices. It supports 17 languages. Um, the choice of different genders for voice and best for basic guide, guidance. But the Google Assistant is um, primarily Android devices, but also available in app form and Google Home. So you can actually use the Google Assistant on, um, app, on Apple iOS as well. And then it supports 30 languages and it has a choice of celebrity voices and it works as a genuine assistant and organizer for you. It's so nice. <laughs> That is and, a cool feature. I do like um, Google Assistant. Yeah, and TJ wrote, so my Google responded, phone lit up, lol. I did not realize the volume was up, lol. That happens so many times. So a lot of our presentations, we talk about Alexa, and we end up using just saying the A lady, because anytime we say it, everyone who has one, like their device just starts going off, and it's, it's, a, it's just chaos. <laughs> Now we're going to go into some vision accessibility features. Um, the iOS vision accessibility, um, after you click into your accessibility uh, selection in your menu for settings, um, it will have a few different options for vision um, to choose from to 
customize your accessibility um, features on your device. So one of them is voiceover, which gives an audible description of what's on your screen and what you touch. Um, there's also zoom magnification, uh, which will magnify what's on your screen. Uh, one of the features for Zoom um, that is a little bit different than Android is that we can choose one or the other options, um, either to magnify um, things on your screen or to Zoom. I think there's like something separate that we can do, but Android can't do that. <laughs> you have to have both on at the same time. Um, and then like if you want to change your display and text size, so that can be um, displaying like to make your text size larger, even changing the, contra the contrast and colors on your screen to fit um, your specific visual needs. Um, motion, spoken content, and audio descriptions. Um, those are all different features for vision accessibility also. And those are very similar for both Android and um, iOS. Uh, we do have a little note down here that you can activate Siri to turn on some of these vision accessibility features. So you can say, Siri, um, turn on voiceover or turn off voiceover. And something else really cool I think that you can do with both um, iOS and Android is you can create shortcuts too. So anytime you want to turn on or off something, you don't have to always go to settings, accessibility, then to the section you need, and then to the um, specific feature you need. So that makes it a lot easier too. Um, and with Android for Vision, they have the TalkBack, which is a screen reader. They also have a Braille keyboard, um, a Select to Speak. And when it comes to the display, they have um, a lot of the similar same like things as iOS, but I feel like it's more in depth and more customizable when it comes to the display and font and um, especially like with the color contrast and options. Um, and that's something that I feel like going more in depth, like if you do have more questions about that is a really good thing to reach out to us about so we can go in depth on each um, specific one. And as far as who um, we would say has the better vision accessibility, we do have a coworker, um, Kelly Blackwell, that uses a screen reader um, often. And what we have noticed is that when she's using her screen reader, um, she kind of has to dig through the settings of Android devices to change or um, to navigate through the menu. And so for vision purposes, um, being able to have that simpler menu that's in the Apple iOS products, um, it's easier for her to set up her device change things on her device and also access um, the various features and apps and things like that. So we would say Apple um, would be the better um, product for vision accessibility. So for iOS um, hearing accessibility, these are also um, very, very similar um, systems as far as accessibility. Um, so there is hearing device connection compatibility. There's um, Apple device, um, hearing device connect connections that can be um, altered to fit your, fit your needs for hearing. Um, so lowering the sound, um, adjusting sound to best fit, and then also Bluetooth connection is available. So we have done demonstrations where we assist people with um, connecting their like cochlear um, implant to their device so that they can hear um, and pick up the phone and hear their phone um, and the phone call through their implant. Um, sound recognition. This is really cool and something that Abby just recently um, told me about. So you can go into your settings and change, um, I'm sorry, allow your phone to be able to recognize different sounds. So that can be anywhere from hearing sounds of every day, like um, sirens, um, different uh, people, baby crying, um, or other ones, Abby. I know I'm looking up mine right now okay. to see which ones, because you can also, on, I don't know if it's the same on iOS, but on Android, you can even add custom sounds too. Oh, wow. So wow. coughing, if someone's shouting um, your appliances, like you can go into your settings and 
literally change and sh turn on and off what you would like your phone to be able to recognize and give you an alert that there's that type of sound um, going on. And then the um, audio visual where you can change where um, when your phone rings that a flight flashes, um, you can add subtitles and captioning. And then also like some of you did say that you use the talk to text apps like live transcribe. Um, those are apps that as where you can open up the app and the phone will listen to uh, what's going on around you and they will pick up on conversations and then it will show text on a screen um, of what people are saying. And that has gotten more developed too, where even when someone is wearing a mask, it still will pick up what people are saying. And with Android, it's a lot of the, a lot of similar um, things. So uh, I didn't talk about real time text where you can um, text to communicate on phone calls. Yeah, and that's something that we both have the iOS and Android, which is really cool. And um, and hearing aid, aid support too, we have that on Android. Um, also with the ambient sound. Um, so if you have your headphones on, it helps so you can, um, you don't get so much background noise. It helps you like focus on who you're speaking with or, um, and also adapt sound, which is really cool too. They have, um, because your ears are so unique, um, they can have, like they can test um, what type of hearing you have, like, and then they can adapt your sound on your phone to work more towards how your ears work. Um, and because TJ is super awesome, I added it on that slide, that um, voicemail transcriber, um, which is so helpful. I love, I love that. I forgot, I don't know how I forgot about it. Um, but yeah, so that was another toss up. We weren't sure um, who really took the cake here. Um, so we just kind of left it up. Yep, and again, this depends on your individual needs. Um, there's so many different features that I, think that um, depending on what you need for hearing accessibility, Apple or Android both have similar um, features for hearing. TJ so, had a comment, sorry. Oh, sorry. He said right. sound notification is so cool. I have it. Cool. Thumbs up. That's something new. I'm actually going to do that. I'm gonna change my accessibility for that too. <laughs> <laughs> so for IRS, I, why do I keep saying that? IOS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's been a um, long interaction, <laughs> interaction and touch accessibility. Um, again, you will go in your settings into accessibility and then you will click touch. And then from there, you can turn on and off your assistive touch. So we added these steps to the screen um, to kind of show that you can customize your menu after you get into the assistive touch screen. So customizing your menu for assistive touch can um, be something as simple as if you're going to do a single tap on your phone, um, it will open up a menu. If you double tap, you can make that um, take a screenshot for you. Um, there's other gestures that you can change. Like sometimes people have changed where they swipe up, then it will go um, to not even the next screen, but um, if you swipe up, it will like turn down the phone instead of turning it up. Like you can change and customize your um, gestures as you see fit um and then um oh it, there's wrong. also an assistive touch button that is on your phone so if you are having a hard time um accessing the side buttons on your different devices you can use that assistive touch button to just access on the screen um different features on your device it looks like tj wrote Okay, please repeat trying to follow on iPad. Oh, and how to get to assistive touch? Yep, so you'll go to settings and then accessibility and then touch. So at the top left of the screen, it says physical and motor touch. And then at the very top, it should say assistive touch. And, and that's something that I really do like with iOS and like that's where they do allow some customization for their users is in their accessibility menus. Yeah. Um, but Android, I mean, everything's customizable. Everything. So that's what I like with Android, but 
And TJ, again, also you can use Siri um, on the iPad to say turn on assistive touch or turn off assistive touch. And then a lot of, again, oh, there are a lot of similarities. I feel like both Android and iOS have really been upping their accessibility game, which is really good. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm just trying to think of some things that weren't on yours, but like the take uh, time to take action is what they call it. Um, it lets you choose how long it shows messages um, in your notification bar. And also they have it so you can reply um, to your notifications instead of like opening the app to reply. Like you can just kind of swipe down to see your notifications like how you normally would and reply right th then and there. You don't have to like actually go to it, open it, and then reply. Um, but something that they both have is switch access and Google actually, well, I guess that's the next slide, but Google worked with um, an individual on how to create a Morse keyboard, um, a Morse code keyboard. And they it is accessible for both iOS and Android. Um, and it works with the uh, switch access and point scan. And we do have a video that we can show. Um, actually, did you want to go to the I next slide? I don't know if I wrote it. Yeah, anything. I think the Google Lookout is really a cool feature for interaction and touch accessibility too, um, because it uses the um, vision of your phone to see for visually impaired or have low vision to about information about their surroundings. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool one too. Does iOS have that though? I thought they did. You we would have to use Google Look Lookout. Like, oh, oh yeah. okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, so that is just an Android thing then, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is really cool. I just tested it out, tested it out on my phone in my office, and it was surprisingly accurate, except for one time it said there was an airplane in here. Um, but it was just <laughs> the way it was hitting a box of paper and something else was like next to each other. And I was like, nah, I don't think there's an airplane in here. <laughs> Um, so it's not always accurate, but for the most part, it is. Um, Sorry, Samantha says Apple can use Seeing AI app, which yes. is really good. Yes, yes. Seeing AI app, that will actually be in our resource guide as well um, as being a good resource um, and app for um, vision accessibility. Thank you for that, Samantha. Oh gosh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, there's a lot of apps, accessibility apps that are super helpful. Yes, and that was in our low vision um, Tech Tuesday last month. So I was like, I don't think, you know, just to kind of give us fresh start, talk about, and then that's that can be in a whole nother um, training too on how to use that app. That's a cool yeah. app. So, and do, we, do we wanna watch the Morse code one? We have like five minutes left. It's two um, minutes of the video. Let's let's go through the slides and then we can go back and okay. watch the video. Okay. So as far as fine motor and touch accessibility, studies have shown that users prefer Apple iOS features over Android for fine motor and touch accessibility. Switch controls were shown to be better on iOS products. So as far as fine motor and touch, we would say Apple is the winner. Um, some and then Abby <laughs> wants to brag. So I just added a few things. Um, I the fact that Android has a back button, I feel like is a huge win. I anytime I'm on an, an iPhone or an, like I feel like I don't know how to work the spaceship. I don't know how to go back in some of the some of the um, parts of the phone. So the fact that it has a back button, huge fan. Um, usually the prices are a lot better. Um, that you can respond in the notifications account flexibility. You can have multiple users use an Android phone. Um, so like you can have like a guest account and you can have like different people in your family or coworkers have an account on the phone to use, which is nice. Um, like being able to clear space on your phone from apps, like the cache clearing, um, file sharing, I feel like is easier. Google Maps, who doesn't, who doesn't use Google Maps? Um, I still accidentally slip and say MapQuest a lot, but I'm, I'm using Google Maps. <laughs> um, the external storage is really good. The USB-C, the customization, and the battery life. I mean, Android. <laughs> <laughs> so also, um, sorry. Um, 
some of the other things that Apple has, we did recently um, change privacy. So like third party apps can't get some of your information. You have the ability to turn that off. I don't think Android has that right now. And Google Maps versus Apple Maps, that's kind of a preference thing too. Like I really, I don't really like Google Maps, um, but my partner swears by it and does not like that I do not use Google Maps. <laughs> it's concerning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that information. And I, I will agree that I think the battery life is definitely better for Android products. Um, but just for some um, help with your device or resources, Apple does provide um, classes and workshops. If you go to apple.com slash today um, or visit your local store, they are very good at um, helping and you can go in and um, get any type of support, um, assistance, classes, demonstrations on your um, Apple device and how to use it. Um, so even just the accessibility in that, when it comes to having an Apple product, knowing that you can find a local store to go into. Um, with Android, I think you probably would have to go to like a Best Buy or Walmart for some sort of assistance. And that will just kind of depend on the store on what they have available to help um, in that department. Um, but There's Apple has a specific area. Yeah. Apple's really good with that. And say Google does have some classes online, but um, there's so many different types of Android devices. It's kind of hard to find that, but yeah. Yeah. And then also help with your device. Again, Michigan Assistive Technology Program, we do have um, demonstrations that are free that, and we have devices available. So we have the Apple Watch, we have um, the Android watches, we have tablets, iPads, um, and not really cell phones. Usually you bring in your cell phone and we can help you um, with the accessible features on your cell phone. But we do have devices um, that we can show you um, to compare and contrast and to have those demonstrations um, kind of a one-on-one -on -one to figure out what works best for you. Um, so in what ways, since we've gone over all the devices, um, what ways do you use your devices to connect with others? This is kind of just a question that we have. Um, we um, are currently really trying to push our um, public health um, and to end social isolation. So we're just trying to get a little bit more information on how people are using their devices to connect with others and to help end social isolation. TJ has something in the chat. Um, I depend on my phone for hearing access, but I would like backup on my iPad. I have not been completely successful with the installation setup on the iPad. You will send the PP for me to follow along with the link for Facebook page ins for instruction. Yeah, so we will um, be sending the PowerPoint, the resource guide, um, and that will have all of our contact information and then also the accessible PowerPoint um, for everyone to have access to this information. Yeah, so, so yes, whatever so email you used to, yeah, whatever email you used to sign up, that's where we're gonna send the information. So other than phone calls, um, as far as connecting with others, um, some of the different ways that you can use your um, devices to prevent social isolation would be video calls. So um, Apple iOS has FaceTime. It sounds like Android doesn't really have a, oh, so Google Duo. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yep, that's cool. That's fine. Um, and then there's also, I was telling Abby that we use Game Pigeon. Um, which is like a game inside of text messages. So if, you know, maybe we don't feel like talking or getting on a FaceTime call, but we can still interact by playing games together. And that's right, accessible through our text messages. Um, and those games can vary from chess, checkers, um, Uno games, uh, connect for, you know, we can do that right in our text messages from our um, Apple devices. Um, voice messaging. Um, so sometimes if you don't feel like texting, um, it is glitchy. Yep, oh. it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but sometimes if you get competitive, it's like, okay, you won this round, let's keep going. And yeah. you can do that for a long time. And it's like, we really didn't talk the whole way through, but you know, we were playing this game and it was fun. So it's still that connection interaction. Um, yeah. Also using your devices for, you know, voice messaging, um, calendars and reminders, and then um, using them for social media apps. And also there are lots of mental health apps 
um, as well. Um, TJ said, I tried to play a family game yesterday and could not get in. Oh, oh, sorry. Dad. Try again. <laughs> try again. No. <laughs> you know, there can be a variety, a variety of things too, because um, we just started playing Among Us, a lot, some of us, um, <laughs> that social isolation thing. And sometimes it was like one or two people just like could not get in. And I don't know if it was like the internet or if it was this or that, but um, just keep trying. Um, Cause it, it is really fun and it's a good way to connect. And if it doesn't work one day, it's always good to try and do it another. Um, and for like FaceTime, yes, we use Google Duo, but also like Facebook Messenger and you don't have to have a Facebook um, in order to use Messenger. Oh um, and so there's, there's, there are different ways. If there's a, something that you think sounds really cool, but you're like, but I don't have that for my phone, that you might, or there might be an option of an app that you can use. So that's something you can reach out to us and we can go over with you as well. Yeah. And this is a very important topic um, because people with disabilities are at a much higher risk at having um, or being uh, affected by social isolation. Sorry. Um, so for to give these type of options um, by having their devices to be able to use them to prevent social isolation, I think this is a good um Thing to have and because and a lot of us can be reluctant to use technology but i think that these devices learning more about them knowing that they can be accessible um is very important and people with disabilities need access to everything and all the things that they want to do yeah and tj asked if android has social games like game pigeon and i don't know if they do um i hope i hope they do and i just don't know about it that's something i'm going to look into right after this and because Android and iOS are always changing, EJ and I, we're probably gonna be looking more into it. And so the next time we have this, it's probably gonna be a completely different presentation. Yeah. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us. Sorry, we uh, kind of went over a little bit. Um, and Bethany says, when I call my son, I have an option to make this a video call. It doesn't always appear, don't know why. Are you on Android or iOS? Android, right? Yeah. Um, because that sometimes happens to me too. Uh, TJ said, I really enjoyed this presentation. So much information. Thank you. Thank you, TJ. We appreciate all your input and interaction. Um, yes, thank you so much. And I'm going to put the link in the chat for the survey if you're still on and could fill that out for us. That would be very helpful. Um, please keep in touch. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, also in our um on the survey, there's an option to be added to our listserv. And then if you fill out that registration and you want it to be added to our listserv, we will be sending out um, emails and other mailings and information and updates about um, future Tech Tuesdays, other events that we're hosting. Um, and then we also have a couple of Facebook groups that we run. Um, Abby runs our inclus inclusive gaming group on Facebook. Um, I run our inclusive arts and crafts and then our coworker Julissa runs our outdoor recreation groups. So keep in touch with us. It was great having you all. Thank you so much. Um, Bethany said, yes, Samsung, yay. Thanks for a great presentation. Hope you do another one soon. Thanks, Bethany. We did not tally up who the winner was, but I definitely think it was Apple. And she's <laughs> wrong, and that's okay. But it was, it was Android. Um, <laughs> Samantha so. said, thank you for this and for letting me join in. FYI, I put down Ross Common for where I am based, for, but I am joining from England, just in case you needed to know for your statistics. Thank you so much, Samantha. And yay, so cool. we reached England. That's so cool. <laughs> Um, TJ, now I have your Facebook page. We'll follow. Look forward to more. Oh, gaming, Android. Yeah. Yes, TJ. Abby is awesome with the assistive technology and other information for gaming. So, Reach out to Abby for that information. Yes. Thanks thank you for joining. For, and special thank you to Lisa for putting up with our fast talking and Christine. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Sorry about that. <laughs> we talked so fast. Um, but yes, thank you everyone for sticking with us for so long after. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, reach out um, and hope everyone has a great day. Bye, everyone.